Yeah, you know what I'm finding is not many people haven't heard of him now. He is like almost mainstream. Yeah. Uh, you know, like you talk about him like one in three people, one in two people have heard about him now. And uh, yeah, he wrote the forward for the book because he heard my story. And um, I obviously I've worked with him a few times now through the becoming the uh, certified. But yeah, I was into breathing as a mm -hmm. part of my healing process. And I realized the power of oxygen just through some of the breaths that I did on my own. Sure. And it just helped my, me mentally, like automatically with like anxiety, all these things that I was dealing with because I had brain damage. Like um, my, I, I had serious neurological damage, some issues going on there. And when I started doing the breathing, I could literally feel the benefits of it. Like instantly I could feel the healing. And, um, at some point I came across the Wim Hof method and I started doing what he said online. Like, I can't remember what I, I saw like a video or something. I started to do it and instantly I was like, Whoa, this is like the next level type stuff. And I immediately booked uh, a retreat with him in Spain. And so I got to spend a week with him back. This was like four years ago or something like that now. That's cool. So I got to spend a week with him in Spain. And as soon as I went to that retreat, it just like clicked. I mean, I was like this, these people are my tribe. It was connected with nature. He was talking about bringing the body back to nature, breath and healing and, and all this stuff. And I was like, this is in direct alignment with everything I already am doing. Right. Sure. I'm already a fitness professional and I get offered certifications all the time and none of them are appealing to me. And I, I have like a CSCS cert, which is like the PhD of kind of the training realm. Okay. And I knew I got to get the Wim Hof certification. Like this is guarantee. And plus it was all backed by science and he was continuing to do the science. And when I would go to these certifications, you'd see like doctors and PhDs and stuff like this. And we were taught by PhDs in neuroscience. And so, um, yeah, this is, it's like, you know, people have been doing breathing and Qigong. This took it to a next level. And now the science was backing it to a point where a doctor actually told Wim Hof specifically, like, if what you're saying is true, we're going to have to change all the textbooks. Wow. Because you're saying you can influence your autonomic nervous system. You can influence your immune system. And yeah, it, it's true. They actually did the studies and they, and they found this out. And so, um, it's a profound technique that can be used anywhere, anytime, which is why I incorporated it as a part of what I do already. Yeah. Uh, because it's just, it's, yeah, it's super valuable for anybody, anytime, anywhere they can do it. Yeah. I, I just started it about a month, maybe a little over a month ago. Um, I, I try to do it on a daily basis. If not, it's like maybe every other day where I'm doing the breathing techniques. Right. Um, I, I notice a big change just in my energy level and, and mostly just like a reduction of, of stress. It just totally eliminates that stress that I have. Um, what, what exactly is it for somebody that just is so new to this, like my, like myself and just doesn't like, I know it works and I know it has benefits, but, um, I guess more on like a scientific level, what is it that like helps reduce stress and gives us more energy? Oh man, there's, it's, it's like crazy the list of things that it does. So, um, so just to break it down, kind of the science is what the Wim Hof method is, is you hyper oxygenate the body. So you breathe a lot of, uh, and get the oxygen levels up. And then when you do that, you reach a certain point, you exhale and hold. This is a basic breathing technique and this is called hypoxia. And uh, Wim's been doing this for like whatever, 30 years. Three scientists actually just got the Nobel Prize last year for hypoxia, um, basically studies or science, and reaffirmed everything we, we learned from Wim Hof. And basically when you do intermittent hypoxia, which is exhaling, meaning getting rid of all the oxygen out of the lungs, you're doing hypoxia training and then you hold your breath. So you're holding your breath with all the oxygen. You've oxygenated the body and now you just sit there with your breath hold. And what happens is the oxygen starts to go down, CO2 starts to go up, and then you CO2 is a vasodilator. 
most people like it gets a bad rap. It's actually super important <laughs> for a lot of things. So CO2 starts to go up. And then once it reaches a point where your brain gets triggered and your diaphragm gets triggered and it says like, hey, you need to breathe, you take an inhale and now the vas there's a vasodilation of all the cells, all the veins, all the arterioles. And when you take a deep breath in after that and you squeeze oxygen, you get more, you shove more oxygen into the cells, which is essential for every single action in the cells and in the body. Okay. Um, it super oxygenates the body. It shoves oxygen into the areas and it goes into the areas that need healing. So people will literally feel the healing firsthand just by doing this. So you do multiple rounds of it. And um, what it does is basically increases the amount of red blood cells in the body. And red blood cells are important because they care, they have hemoglobin. Hemoglobin is what transports the oxygen. So okay. the more red blood cells, the more oxygen attaches to the hemoglobin, the more oxygen you get to every part of your body. And the parts of the body that are lacking oxygen are the sick and diseased areas. And so the more oxygen you get to the area, in combination with that, when you exhale and hold, um, the brain goes into a fight or flight kind of mode without you, I mean, some people will freak out at first if they're not comfortable with it because the natural rhythm is to breathe. And when yep. you exhale and hold, you go into that fight or flight. And when you go into the fight or flight and you hold, the adrenaline skyrockets more and greater than if you were going to go skydiving or bungee jumping for the first time in your life. Whoa. Yeah. So adrenaline goes sky high. Now this isn't studied but this is my opinion based on a lot of experience with it, that what it does is it actually balances out all the systems in the body when you do this. So if you're somebody that has, uh, you know, parasympathetic dominant, you're now going to activate your sympathetic nervous system more. If you're sympathetic dominant, you now activate your parasympathetic nervous system more. Meaning if you've been like... Uh, like going and going nonstop and haven't really relaxed too much and you've always been uh, hyper strung, when you do the breathing, people will just be like, oh man, I feel amazing. Whereas other people will feel like who are parasympathetic dominant and who kind of like calm and relaxed, they'll feel like alert. And so everybody's different. Everybody's physiology is different. Everybody reacts differently. Um, always a disclaimer, like if people do do this, do it in a safe spot, if yep. you have epilepsy, uh, you can't do it because yep. uh, it can trigger. So those are just disclaimers. But yeah, it's uh, those are two of like uh, a ton of other things. So many. Yeah, that's so uh, cool. I, I It's so fascinating. I mean, my first thought is, and, and I know, uh, by the way, there's so much more that you do than just the Wim Hof method and training. Uh, so I want to get into your, your new book um, and some of the other techniques that you like to practice. But um, when I hear everything you're saying with the Wim Hof method, and I'm sure all of the other just like natural holistic healing methods that you have, why isn't this something that more people are doing? And why aren't we talking about it more? Why isn't it something that is taught in schools? Like, I, I guess maybe it's starting to make its way to mainstream. Um, but uh, to me, that's like my first thought is like, why haven't I been doing all of this all along? Yeah, because... Um... <laughs> Well, if I want to get deep into it, it's because uh, people don't want you to know that you have this power on your own, right? The whole system is designed for you to be like the doctor is your new God. And the truth is, and this is part of why the book's so important, is that you, uh, this is the message that I'm trying to convey, and I lived this. So it's not like I've experienced it firsthand, is that we have the power. And we're ultimately responsible for our health and learning these hacks and things that I talk about in this book is actually our responsibility because if we want to be healthy, happy, free, then um, it's essential. And these things were essential back in the day and we've yep. slowly been removed. And anybody that practices kind of natural medicine now, if they make it to a certain level, like they're, you know, the reputation is kind of like, oh, they're a quack oh, they're, they're not a real doctor right. or, and that's changing now. 
people are starting to wake up because the system is failing. <laughs> Medication right. is not making people healthier. It's, ma- it's killing them. We know like the third leading cause of death is medical malpractice or doctor error or over prescription of medication. So um, that's where the control is. I'm hoping it'll change and people will learn this. Um, also, there was like a lack of knowledge in terms of breathing. You know, I don't know how old you are, but I'm 28. 28. Okay. So like when I was growing up very little, like people weren't practicing Eastern, right? you know, medicine. And it was kind of looked at like, oh yeah, Eastern medicine. Yeah. They've been doing it for 10,000 years. They, they were way ahead of the curve. They knew what was going on. So uh, people are starting to incorporate all that stuff. There's a lot more truth to it, I find. Yep. Uh, but with that being said, there are benefits to our medical system when there's trauma. You know, I was in Costa Rica here. I jumped off a, a waterfall and I tore my pec completely off the bone. And, um, you know, that's when you need the, the medical system. 